I recently decided to apply for my professional engineering license and to take the PE exam. Now, what exactly is a professional license? What is a PE exam? What are the benefits? And is it mandatory for engineers? That's what this video is going to be about. Welcome back to another video, guys. My name is Wee Sam. I'm a mechanical engineer working and living in Canada. And this video is going to be, like I said, about professional designations, engineer designations. So what exactly is a professional engineer? It is a person who has been designated, who's been issued a license to practice engineering by a regu regulatory body, right? Now, you may think that's that's what you get, that's what a degree is for, you, you're qualified to practice, and that's true to an extent, but there are levels to engineering. So as a graduate engineer, you can you can work, but you always have to work under a licensed engineer who would therefore be responsible for your work. You cannot actually call yourself an engineer technically without without getting your PN, right? So on your you know your email signatures, or your business cards or whatever, you have to put it, you know, engineering training or, or something. So yes, technically you're a graduate engineer, as they call it. Maybe that's less getting into semantics, but basically you will always work under someone if you're not fully licensed. Now, every country has different qualifications and definitely different exams that you need to take to to become a professional. And I'm just going to be talking about Canada and the U.S. here. So in the U.S., it's the PE exam. That's I'm calling the. It's not what it's called in Canada. The PE exam is for the U.S. and it's discipline dependent and it's pretty technical. That's not the case in Canada. In Canada, it's called the NPPE exam, and it's purely an ethics-based exam. On APEGA's website here, you can see that our exam is, it's two and a half hours long, okay? Two and a half hours. The PE exam is nine hours. Quite a difference. Uh, and on the NTES website, yeah, you can see it's discipline dependent, right? If we go into mechanical here, you can see what, what some of the topics are, thermodynamics, um, you know, heating systems, coolants, et cetera. It's not, it's more technical based. So why should you get your PNG? Whether you have your PNG uh, in wherever it is, the, the pros and cons, I believe are, are pretty similar, okay? So do you have to get your PNG? The answer is no. You do not need your PNG. There are plenty of people who work their whole lives as, yeah, as an engineer and do not end up getting their professional designation. Why do some people end up getting it? Because if, if you don't need it, then why why would you get it? So there's a few reasons why. Number one, if your industry requires it. If you want to, let's say, work in a public sector like the government, then a lot of times you do need to be a professional. So anything to do with the transportation, roads, you know, a lot of civil engineers get their, have to get their PNG. I, th I think they're the ones that have the highest percentage of, of, uh, of PNGs because a lot of times they're required to. Not all the time, but a lot of times they are. Well, another reason would be if you want to own your own firm. So in, in a lot of states, firms that provide engineering services are actually authorized to, uh, to be licensed. That means either having someone, uh, a professional engineer working in your company, or you being a, a PNG yourself. Uh, getting into management, you know, uh, moving up, uh, becoming a project manager. That might be another reason. Taking on more responsibility. If you've reached a point where you want to now start uh, uh, shouldering that load and and being responsible for the junior's work, that um, that that that's something too. That's now okay. Let's talk about that for a sec because when you become a P engine, you and you you choose to sign off on things because you don't have to. I'll get into that. But if you choose to um, uh, to go down that route, you do end up becoming liable for things. You become liable for your your designs and your, and your engineer's designs. And that means that you're responsible for something. So once you put your name on a design, you're responsible for it forever. But that means that if, if something fails, you will, you will be held responsible. And and it could come with some pretty severe punishments. Now, as a PNG, you don't have to take on that responsibility if you don't want to. There's plenty of PNGs who don't ever have the final say on on designs. They always end up like working under on another PNG. Uh, it's sort of on on you as the engineer to do what you, you're comfortable doing. Like I'm, I'm not gonna 
when I do get my PNG, I'm not going to go and start signing off on things. I'm going to, you know, maybe work my way up to get to that point. But it's all, it's all based on your own confidence and your own, your own experience. Money is another reason, right? Getting your designation typically comes with a with an increase in salary, and then pride. You know, pride and, and credibility. I, for for me personally, that's that that is a big factor. It's it's a nice little feather in the calf to to call myself a a PNG. That would be that would be pretty sweet. Now, what are the qualifications that you need to get your PNG? Like I said, it differs for different places, but there's typically four or five of them. Graduate from an ABET accredited school, take and pass the FE exam. Again, that's for the U.S., not for Canada. Use you about four years of experience is required. Pass the PE exam, and then have your application approved. So that's the stage that I'm at right now. I'm working on my application. It's a little bit of a process. Now, if you're a foreigner, let's say you want to work in the U.S. or Canada, you could still get your, your designation. You have to check in with your accredita- accreditation board uh, to, to figure out what they need because a lot of the times they will give you credit if you uh, for your experience and for your school. Um, but you yeah, you have to check in with your board. All right, now we'll go over some questions from the Canadian PE exam or the NPP exam, I guess. You can see some of the topics here, professionalism, ethics, professional practice, law for professional practice. I'm getting bored just reading this. According to most provincial and territorial acts, which activity by a professional member would be considered unethical? Not charging a fee for presenting a speech, signing plans prepared by an unknown person, probably B. That seems first forward. Yeah, B is correct. Which of the following is an example of a fraudulent contractual misrepresentation? A fraudulent would mean like you're you're purposely doing something. Um, you're not coercing anyone. I, I would say it's B. B is correct. Contractual disputes of a technical nature may be most expeditiously and effectively solved through... A lawsuit, court appeals, contract negotiations, arbitration, not renegotiations, court appeals. Well, there's been two. There's been two Bs already. It's probably not B. <laughs> I would. I would guess D. I would guess D. Yes. Which type of original work below is automatically protected by copyright? See, this is something. This is this is something I'd have to study. This is not like a common sense one. I would say clothing, clothing designs. <laughs> Which of the following is the most common job activity of top level managers? Writing and reading corporate financial reports. That might be D here. Like a manager is always responsible for for managing. That's 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 the title. Doesn't mean that you have to read financial reports. Doesn't mean that you are designing anything. I would say I would say D. Yes. To effectively reduce liability exposure, the professional engineer or geoscientist should pursue continuing educational opportunities, work under the supervision of a, of a PNG, maintain professional standards and practice, provide clients with frequent progress supports. They all seem reasonable except for except for D. I feel like B is kind of a... It's, it's like, that's not really a solution because, I mean, someone's going to have to to sign off on the work. So, so maybe C? I don't know. C sounds about yes. So that's, I guess, a basic look at what the Canadian exam would be. It's it doesn't seem too hard. The U.S. one is probably lot is probably tougher if it's four times as long. I don't know, but um, yeah, I'm lo- I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it and, and getting my application approved hopefully and and call myself a PNG. That would that be pretty. That'd be pretty cool. So in summary, you don't need to get your PNG. It's really industry dependent, and it, it really depends on what your goals are. If you, if you want to specialize in, in CFD or you want to be the simulation guy or the programmer, like you, you probably don't need to get it. If you want to go into management and you want to, I don't know, have a, a little bit of a larger salary and start to start to lead projects and stuff, maybe it is a good idea, right? I think the points apply across the board, like wh- whatever whatever country and whatever qualifications you need, the the reasons why and why not you should get, I think, I think are pretty similar. So that's it for this video. Um, I won't leave again for three months. Uh, I'll tell you that. Do like this video. Uh, subscribe to this channel, please, if you have not already. And um, we will, uh, we'll see you guys soon. Later.